Bible prophecy is active and unfolding daily. Zechariah 12, Isaiah 17, Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38. Here is what the lamestream media is not telling you. Shalom, my friends. Welcome to this week's newscast. Khaled Abu Toameh of the Gatestone Institute tells us a recent report estimates that some 100 Palestinians have already joined ISIS, mostly from Gaza, while another thousand are believed to be preparing to join. Recent public opinion polls found that 24% of Palestinians hold positive views about ISIS which means that more than one million Palestinians support the Islamic State. Commenting on the polls, Christian activist Sam Boutros wrote, quote, Apparently, 20% of the Palestinians have no problem with expelling their Christian brothers and destroying their churches and turning them into mosques, close quote. The fiery rhetoric of the Palestinian Authority and Hamas leaders, in addition to ongoing incitement against Israel and the West, is further radicalizing Palestinians and driving them into the Islamic State's open arms. Fars Iran reported last week that the Iranian Parliament Speaker's Advisor for International Affairs Hossein Sheikh Islam said on Tuesday, quote, Our positions against the usurper Zionist regime have not changed at all. Israel should be annihilated, and this is our ultimate slogan. Turning to wars and rumors of wars, on Monday, August 24th, the Jerusalem Post reported that Hamas co-founder and former foreign minister Mahmoud Zahar told Hamas's Al-Aqsa TV that the group is currently focusing its energy on taking power in the West Bank. He said the success of the organization in Gaza should be replicated in the West Bank. Zahar also called reports that Hamas was near a long-term truce with Israel lies that have no basis in reality. On Tuesday, August 25th, from Ynet News, the Israel Security Agency arrested four Palestinians planning to ambush Jewish worshippers visiting Joseph's tomb in Nablus. Shechem, with a bomb and rifle fire. The West Bank terror cell was directed from Gaza by Islamic Jihad member Mohammed Darwish, a 23-year-old Palestinian policeman who was arrested along with the suspects who admitted to involvement in the plot, including conducting preliminary intelligence gathering at the site and initial bomb training. Also from the Jerusalem Post, IDF forces raided a Palestinian home on Tuesday and discovered six rifles and a handgun. Several rifle ammunition clips were discovered inside a teddy bear. Then on Wednesday, August 26th, Israel Channel 2 TV Hebrew reported that a new video posted on Wednesday reveals Hamas's major investment in preparing its attack tunnel forces. The video depicts Palestinian attack tunnel commandos training for surprise assaults on IDF positions and civilian homes in Israel. In light of the success of Israel's Iron Dome anti-missile defenses in the 2014 Gaza War, Hamas is currently emphasizing the strategic threat of attack tunnels even more than that of rockets. Haaretz reported a Palestinian armed with an axe and a knife stabbed an Israeli border police officer at the Damascus Gate in Jerusalem's Old City on Wednesday evening. 
The Palestinian man was 56-year-old Muammar Atta Mahmoud of Hebron and was convicted of murdering Menahem Stern, an Israel prize-winning Hebrew University history professor back in 1989. Mahmoud was released in 2013 as part of peace talks between Israel and the Palestinian Authority. Then Kurdish Peshmerga forces attacked ISIS in a cluster of villages in Iraq's northern province of Kirkuk. Bent on securing territory they have gained in the course of rolling back the jihadists since last summer. The front line between the regional Kurdish Peshmerga forces and ISIS in northern Iraq has hardly budged for months. According to local sources, Peshmerga recaptured 13 villages in southern Kirkuk province. Then on Saturday, August 29th, a Palestinian driver swerved his vehicle toward four IDF soldiers on foot patrol near Hebron on Saturday night. The car ran over the foot of one of the soldiers who opened fire as the driver fled toward Hebron. On Sunday, August 30th, the Saudi Daily Okaz reported that Hezbollah has been working intensively to enlist former operatives from Fatah's Al-Aqsa brigades to carry out terror attacks against Israeli targets in the West Bank and inside Israel. On Monday, August 31st, from the Jerusalem Post, a Palestinian terrorist shot Ronan Edri in the arm as he drove in the West Bank on his way to work Sunday morning. A car pulled alongside his and a Palestinian shot at him through the window, spraying bullets at the side of his car. A father of four and a volunteer ambulance driver. He said, quote, This could have cost me my life. You're driving down the road, and all of a sudden, they shoot at you. There is an awfully big buzz growing about a global financial collapse happening. And the fact of the matter is that a large number of important indicators point to the fact that the United States could experience another stock market crash in 2015, which of course is to be expected, because 2015 is a Shemitah year, and that is exactly what has happened in previous Shemitah years. Michael Lombardi, who is followed by millions of investors because he has been recognized as a predictor of major economic events before they happen, is now predicting that, quote, today's stock market is setting up for a huge collapse that will make the stock market crashes of 2008 and 1929 look like a cakewalk. Close quote. Further, now being called Black Monday, August 24th ended with Chinese equities down 8.5% wiping out hundreds of billions of dollars in market capitalization. And the market bust in Shanghai was no more unusual than the smaller drops seen in Tokyo, London, and New York on that very same day. Today is September 1st, my friends, and this month brings Abba Father Yahweh's Kodesh appointment with mankind, Yom Teruah for the Netchatef, the rapture, to occur. Now, I am not saying that the Netchatef, the rapture, will occur this Yom Teruah, but I am saying that it looks more likely than any year I have ever seen. Yom Teruah also includes a partial solar eclipse and marks the end of the seventh Shemitah, a time for great judgments to fall on the nations of the earth. 
and is followed by a super lunar eclipse on September 28th, the final blood moon of the blood moon tetrad. So the last quarter of this year is going to be something quite unusual. Once again, I'm going to point you to Scott Clark's excellent work. You'll see this graphic at the end of today's newscast. You can click on that or on the text link seen beneath today's video in the More Info section and it'll take you to directly to Scott's webpage titled The Epic Alignment of September 2015 where you can read about and view seven very descriptive and revealing charts which Scott has created for you. If you want to know more about the Blood Moon Tetrad, the Super Blood Moon of September 28th, the Lunar Tetrad Patterns, the Shemitah Cycles, and the Jubilee Cycles, you'll want to click this link. One way or another, my friends, no matter how we look at it, we are standing at the very brink, looking right in the face of a very large global event. The very event that has been prophesied about for nearly 2,000 years, and that is the emergence of the Antichrist and the beginning of Daniel's 70th week, the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven-year tribulation, which is preceded by the Netchetef, the rapture, and followed by the second coming of Messiah. You know, the financial crash they're all talking about, should that happen, there's going to be global chaos. Money is going to be worthless. Unless you have gold, silver, or jewels, uh, you won't have any currency. Uh, people's jobs, uh, worthless. Where can you get food if you, you don't have money? You know, it's going to be a big deal. What does it lead to? I think just what all the world leaders want, and that is a global government. Uh, no more currency. Do a chip, whatever. Uh, and what will that lead to, you know? Global religion, uh, global everything. And that is uh, the prophecies about the Antichrist. This is a guy who comes up and he's got all the answers. Everybody thinks he's a gem. Anyway, I can't go into all of that here. If you've never read the book of Revelation, you might like to know that it is the one and the only book in the entire Bible that promises a special beracha, a special blessing to everyone who reads it or who hears it read. And I invite you to do just that with me. You'll see this graphic at the end of today's newscast. You can click on it, or you can click the text link seen in the More Info section beneath this video and go through the entire book of Revelation, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, with me. And in the introduction, I cover uh, some other very important and relative uh, scriptures um, that lead into the beginning of the reading of the book. Anyway, to recap this week's newscast, 100 Palestinians have already joined ISIS, mostly from Gaza, while another thousand are believed to be preparing to join. The Iranian Parliament Speaker's Advisor for International Affairs made it clear that Iran's ultimate slogan is, Israel should be annihilated. Hamas is currently focusing all its energy on taking power in the West Bank, with commandos training for surprise assaults on IDF positions and civilian homes in Israel. The Israeli security agency arrested four Palestinians planning to ambush Jewish worshippers vis visiting Joseph's tomb with a bomb and rifle fire. IDF forces raided a Palestinian home on Tuesday and discovered six rifles, a handgun, and ammunition clips hidden in a teddy bear. 
A Palestinian armed with an axe and a knife stabbed an, an Israeli border police officer at the Damascus Gate in Jerusalem's old city. Kurdish Peshmerga forces attacked ISIS in a cluster of villages in Iraq's northern province of Kirkuk and recaptured 13 villages. A Palestinian driver swerved his vehicle toward four IDF soldiers on foot patrol. Hezbollah has been working intensively to enlist former operatives from Fatah's al-Aqsa brigades to carry out terror attacks against Israeli targets in the West Bank and inside Israel. A Palestinian terrorist shot an innocent man in the arm as he drove in the West Bank on his way to work. And financial experts are predicting an imminent and massive global financial crash. And that, my friends, is what the lamestream media is not telling you. Abba willing, I'll see you here again next week. Until then, stay safe. Shalom.